Hello, my name is Mark Levitt. I'm retired from careers in electronic engineering and as a physician. And uh, I'm submitting this video to uh, show my uh, fabrication and assembly of an enable hand to become qualified to become a fabricator and assembler. All right, uh, let's take a look at the device itself. So uh, I've made a Phoenix Unlimited hand right side at 120% scale. And this uses the um, three screw tensioner and it uses the thermoformed gauntlet. And this Phoenix Unlimited has the integral thermoformable palm, not the separate palm that's screwed on. So to look at the function of the hand, you can see that when I bring the wrist in, the fingers close and the thumb closes on top of them. I'll give you a couple of views here. I'll show the tensioner operating here. As you can see, turning this screw tightens this tensioner bar or loosens it as I, as I loosen it. And that adjusts the function on the second and third finger, the tightness. Let's look at the durability. You can see that the thermoform gauntlet is very strong as a result of being bent after printing rather than having all those Z layers. Um, the palm is very strong because it has the integral integral palm, so there's no flexing there. And uh, I can shake this violently. No pins come out. I can put quite a bit of stress um, upward on the fingers. I can overstress them downward. Everything holds together. So uh, I'm really pleased by the durability. You can see the pins in place here. There's no tendency of these to shake out both sides. Let's take a look at the print quality here. Um, the only place you really see stepping is at the top of the palm. You can see that the uh, 200 micron layers give some stepping, but it's not rough to the touch. Um, the fingertips came out quite good after I learned how to slow down the printing so you didn't get drooping or curling. And um, I think what I'll do here is pull off the silicone tip on the pinky finger and give you a close-up of that as best I can. There you go. So you can see I got good results uh, after, you know, a couple of tries and a learning experience. And then the bottom side of the finger, again, you're going to see some stepping there. But beyond that, not really a lot of roughness. I think more important than how the hand looks is how it functions. So let's try some demonstrations. Let's pick up this bottle of isopropanol. I can do that without spilling it. Um, let's see if we can pick up a screwdriver. I'm not sure how well we could screw something with it, but we can pick it up and manipulate it. Um, talking about getting something delicate, let's get a Kleenex. Actually, a Kim wipe. There you go. And for kind of a brute force test, I've got this bolt. Um, it's heavy. And we're going to grab it off the table here and see if we can pick that up. There it is. Pick up this heavy bolt. So this hand was printed on an original Prusa i3 Mark II, which I built from a kit. Uh, just got it assembled about a month ago. I was pretty pleased by how well the hand was designed to enable printing on this pretty low-end printer. The gauntlet was thermoformed using the uh, 3D printed jig that was provided as part of the files. So I think that's a technique that will find greater use in these prosthetics, a combination of 3D printing and post-printing thermoforming. There were a few issues when printing. So one of them was that the slicer that comes with the Prusa printer um, actually omitted some plastic. I think you can probably see here, there's actually a gap right here. And that's because the slicer thought that the wall was too thin and just omitted that connection. So that was just a matter of, of adjusting the slicer settings to not allow it to thin the wall that much. The other issue is when you're printing these overhangs. So you can see this part, the tips of it have curled up. This was only partially printed. It's the proximal phalanx. And once those tips curl up, the nozzle or the proximity detector eventually hits it and either knocks the print loose or causes other catastrophic failures. So I had to try a couple times before I found out how to fix that. So it turns out on the Prusa printer, 
the cooling fan uh, is in front of the printhead and has trouble cooling the area behind the printhead. So if you orient this on the bed with those narrow tips toward the back, you're more likely to get curling. So I found if you reorient the print with the narrow tips in the in the wider, sorry, the X direction this way, you have less trouble. And also you slow the print speed that allows more time for cooling. So that solved the problem that I had with overhang. The third issue is um, a design issue. And that is that there's really too much gap um, between the hinged parts when you scale the design. When you scale it up bigger, you end up with bigger clearances, bigger than you need. Um, and so the result, and I've seen this occasionally when I use the hand, is the dental band can lodge into that excess crack that's formed by the hinge. It's not happening now, but I've seen it happen. And it's easy to fix, but you really don't want the user to experience that. And to solve that, we really need a design that can be scaled in size, but that maintains the same clearances between the parts of the hinge. So that wraps up my uh, video description. Um, I want to thank everyone at Enable for starting this project, which has so much potential to do so much good, and at the same time is really fun and rewarding for makers like myself to get involved in. So thanks a lot. <laughs>